How's it going everybody? Gunner here. Um, yesterday I posted on Instagram a few of these pictures. Now uh, this is a strong fuzzy fiber bulkhead deceiver. Two of my favorite influences ever. Bob Popovic's bulkhead, Johnny King, Kinky Muddler. Combine them both, it's a super sick pattern. Now y'all are going to have to wait till this fall to get a tutorial of that fly and a few others, but uh, that, f that fly has heckle tails, um, kind of like this one. And Heckle tails are something I struggled with forever, getting heckles to behave the way I want on the tail of a fly. So this is a quick tutorial on how to get the perfect heckle placement. We're gonna do two variations. We're gonna do just feathers, and it's gonna be designed to be high and tight, low profile, more wispy, more translucent. Um, it's gonna be more applicable on smaller flies, but also more applicable on things like maybe a silver side imitation if you're a saltwater guy, or like an emerald shiner imitation if you're a freshwater guy. Then, we're gonna jump to the three-dimensional, more of a bulkier, kind of fatter bodied tail that's designed to carry that dimensionality backwards. It's also more applicable to opaque bait fish. So there's gonna be like your mature bait fish, gonna be things like maybe uh, suckers and chubs, things like mullet, things that are fully grown, completely blocking light, and they have some mass towards the rear of that fly. And I'm gonna show you how to utilize your hackle stems to get the correct lie while you're tying in that feather. So, check it out. So first things first, I want you guys to basically look at this hook from the hook eye. And what you have to understand, we're gonna get our feathers nice and high and tight, wait. I want this feather to be sideways, pinned right on the side of this hook so that I get that tall, narrow profile. So this is the hook. If you're looking down the hook, you're looking right at this dot, right? And if you take a cross section of a hackle stem, now again, we're, we're starting two dimensional, we're starting lower profile. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna cut this let's say right about here, right? I'm gonna cut that right here. Now if you zoomed in on this, super tight, this is what you're gonna get. So this is the cross section of the, the, the stem, basically. And your stem and your feather are actually perpendicular to each other. Now what's really frustrating, if you put a lot of pressure on this and you try to tie that in dead center on the side of your hook, guess what happens? This stem is gonna flip sideways. It wants to be flat on flat. Now, here's the trick, and I'll, I'll show you this real quick because I want you guys to believe me, so check this out. So we're zoomed in here, and I want you guys to see exactly what this feather is going to do here if I try to tie this in on the side of my hook, right? So most of you are probably coming back here, you put your feather up here, you get a nice loose wrap, you go to pull it tight, and it turns completely flat. Completely flat, and you're like, man, that's not what I wanted. How do I get this nice vertical tail? Oh, right? So, here's the secret. Going back to our drawing here. And I'm going to keep this zoomed in on the vise, but here's the secret. You move from trying to tie it in on the side to pick it up, pop it right on top. Now, if you did that, your stem would be totally flat. Your feathers would still be vertical. Your stem is flat on your hook shank. So, check this out. I'm going to clear just like five or six little stems away. I'm gonna put it dead on top of my hook shank. Lock, oh, ooh, look at that, perfectly high and tight hackle. Did everything I wanted. Now what you're gonna do is obviously you're gonna take a second hackle and pair them so that they're concave together. You got a nice low profile, short, wispy tail imitating smaller forage, also 2D forage that are nice and high and tight and also more transparent forage. Cause we're only using two hackles and you can choose nice kind of light uh, saddle hackles with some flash and they're, they're not gonna block a lot of sunlight. They're gonna be fairly transparent. Now. I'm going to take this off of here and show you guys how to do a bulky three-dimensional tail. But before I do, let's jump back to that whiteboard real quick. Now what's really interesting is as you move farther back into the feather. Oh, I need to get more feathers. Well, check this out. Anyway, as you move farther back into the, into the feather and you get towards this really nice kind of marabou-y stuff, guess what happens? If I were to try to tie that in back there. This is gonna do everything I want. So if you look at that feather, what happens to the stem is it changes its orientation and it becomes kind of more oval, but the most important thing is it becomes parallel to the feather orientation. These are your feathers and it's become uh, kind of oval in the same orientation parallel to the direction of the feathers. Now in that scenario, I don't need to tie it on top. I can take this 
feather and pin it right to the side of this hook, compress it, boom! It's perfectly high and tight right on the side of my hook. But I want to show you guys how to make kind of the most effective tail for your three-dimensional flies. Because you don't want a three-dimensional fly and a two-dimensional tail. It doesn't make sense. You want to carry that dimensionality backwards. You want something with some actual bulk and fatness to it going in the back with nice opacity. I think I made that up. Opaqueness? I don't know. Anyway, so check this out. I gotta get a few more hackles here and I'll show you how to tie a proper three-dimensional tail for your mullets and suckers and chubs and all your juveniles and all that good stuff. Four nice saddle hackles and I'm gonna trim them all so that my tying point is going to be up in that marabou stem section. Now, this has two purposes. Again, I can I have more control over the orientation of that feather and it's gonna tie in exactly wherever I put it. And that's important because I'm going to change the angle that I tie these in. I'm going to basically uh, put a base of bucktail down to give it some stability and support and keep the feathers from pairing. And then I'm gonna tie the, the feathers kind of like at an underside and then an overside and create a three-dimensional fly instead of stacking side to side and stacking side to side, but we're actually going to give it some dimensionality, which is something that I personally learned from Johnny King, and I think it's one of the coolest ways to build a tail. So I'm going to take some long bucktail here, clean it out, get a nice tight pinch, and I'll zoom in for you guys. Check this out. I'm going to spin my whoopsie daisy, spin my thread real quick so I have a nice strong cord here. Flare down that bucktail. I'm going to Kind of move that over the top of the shank a little bit. I don't really want it on the underside, but flare it out a little bit. And then I'm going to flatten that with some nice low pressure wraps. Come back. Now I'm going to take this first one and pin that just kind of on the underside. And you're going to see, hey, that feather went right where I put it. Take the next one, kind of go right on top of that, and it's going to round out a little bit. We're going to get this nice kind of rounded feather here. Switch to the other side. I'll finish rounding this top off. And then I'm going to kind of round the bottom off. Now you have this super nice three dimensional tail with a little bit more structural stability in the back so you get less fouling. And it's all kind of being separated over that base of bucktail so it doesn't all just pin together. And you can go from that three dimensional head and shoulders to a nice opaque tail that's going to be perfect for your larger bait fish imitations. So hopefully you guys found that useful um, and you can create the actual, not actual, but just picture perfect hackle tails that are going to swim, dance, they're relative to the forge that you're trying to match and um, simplifies your tying process. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.